Welcome to Boomcast, the official podcast from Boombox.io. I'm Isabel Lucas. And I'm Fabio from Noise. Boombox is a collaboration tool for producers and musicians, engineers, everyone to be able to share, store, and synergize creativity. Also, don't forget that one of the first 100 comments down below will get professional track feedback from myself or Lucas. So comment down below, what is the dream record label that you want to be signed to? Today, we were with a very special guest, our first guest ever on the podcast, actually. This is Moti. He's a platinum selling artist. He's worked with the likes of Martin Garrix, Selena Gomez, and more. And he also owns his own record label, Zero Cool, and today we are going to be talking to him about what record labels look for. Modi, thank you so much for being here. It's such an honor to have you. Well, honor to be here. So when you first started out, was it a love for production? Did you want to get signed to a particular label? Where did it all kick off? Well, yeah, it's, it's kind of a funny story. So I'm when I was 15, 16, something like that, I was working at a store. And, uh, uh, you know, a colleague of mine working in the store, he uh, DJed and he played with turntables and at some point he wanted to buy new ones. So he, he was going to sell his old ones and, uh, well, he, he gave it to me for a very cheap price. So it was, you know, it was, was still playing with vinyl. So I had to go to the record store every week and, you know, to spend a little money I had on records. So I went there back and forth buying records. And at some point, um, uh, uh, MP3 and CDJs uh, came into the market. You know, you started buying and downloading music on the computer. And um, I started cutting out breaks out of tracks. And I went to, this, to the record store and I sh wanted to show them, like, yeah, look what I did to the track. And, you know, I thought this break was too long, so I, I, I cut a little bit out. <laughs> and, they, and they looked at me and like, dude, you can't do that. You're, you're, you're messing up other people's work, you know, you can't do that. And they, they got quite angry with me. So, um, so I thought, like, okay, I'm going to make my own music. So I went back home and started producing my own music and, you know, showed them, came back to the store, like, here. No, I'll make my own music. What do you think? You know, and, and that's how it started. Yeah, yeah. I love that. And when you were buying records, I, I, I feel like that's like for a lot of people when they first discover labels because you start buying into a sound and then you start realizing you're buying from a specific record label. Was it similar with you? No, not really. Like back then, you also trusted on the selection of the owners of the record stores mm. because um but now everything is uh, unlimited copies you know you can get music uh, yeah. you know if, if someone plays a, a record you think ah, i want a record too you can buy it back in the day it wasn't like that yeah. when it's when it's empty it's empty mm -hmm. and you can't you can't get it from anywhere yeah or you have to buy it for a very high price online or well for or well, well back then yeah. you didn't have online you know so what's the modern equivalent of that person at the record store who you would depend on for great record selection, who had that big box right. for the DJs. I think that would be like a Spotify curator, you know, and uh, someone who's good uh, at it. Uh, 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 yeah, kind of. Yeah, or, or the DJs themselves who right. play, yeah. Yeah. I was gonna also say, probably also the algorithm, right? Because yeah, yeah. a lot of those playlists now are algorithmic and it all depends on what listeners are listening to in their personal playlists, boosts it to bigger playlists, which boosts it to bigger playlists. Yeah. yeah, so it kind of vets it itself, but that can also be problematic because then you have uh, artists who have more streams who are getting like extra attention whereas it's harder for the artists who are just starting out to be able to get the algorithm to discover them in the first place it's 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 hard to um uh, to build a label on streaming uh, websites yeah. because um you know if you go to beatport track source those those kind of websites that sell MTs, yeah. You know, you can actually click on a label and see all the releases of the label. And, you know, right. th that's where you can build labels. But um, uh, on streaming, you don't have that option. You, you, ca you can only see, see into uh, artist profiles. Right. So everything is linked to the profile. So if you want to build a, a label on streaming level, you have to have an artist who can you know, who can pull the label and who, right. who can, who can, um, yeah, can build it. I've noticed that about you is that you work with all these different artists, like we talked about, like Martin Garrix, Selena Gomez, etc. And I noticed that you tap into all these different audiences, which I think isn't that helpful for you to keep your streams growing and keep your audience growing. Is that why you do that? Um, no, not because th that was that was quite some time ago that right. that, uh, that I did the records with with Martin and and, and Tiesto and everyone. But you still do but a lot of collaborations, right? I do, I do, and I do a lot of remixes uh, right. for, for 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 more pop pop artists. So so that expands your your reach, you know. But um, uh, the reason why I did did all the collabs on the club scene uh, with 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 the other DJs. Yeah 
was basically back then to to get all those other audiences but but spotify wasn't that big right. back then so it was more to build more of a club profile you know and if right. you know if you do a collab with martin you, you the, the fan martin's fans will get to know you if you do a collab with dubs dubs fans get to know you so you show you you build your 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 audience with it so tell us why did you start the record label zero cool the main reason was um um to to have control over my own tracks you know to to know or, or to to create what i wanted to create without people telling me i can't create that you know or i have to do it different because the trend is something else or you know whatever yeah i'm curious to know if since you started it if anything has kind of developed that you didn't necessarily think would at first like how is it transformed into what it is today and how do you how are you enjoying that experience well at at the same time that I started the label, my second uh, uh, kid was was ju was just born, and I was still traveling a lot, and I was a lot in Asia, and you know I started missing my family as well. So uh, um, when when the, when the label started, well, uh, we we had a pretty aggressive strategy with the label. You know, uh, we did uh, weekly moti releases for for a I year. I remember that he released a, he released every a Friday track every single week. Well, so, but but it was you know it was necessary to create a hype you know to yeah. to to create it or to to get attention, mm -hmm. so that 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 worked really well. But but because the, that strategy worked, the label was growing very fast. Why and that uh, transformed in that I could tour a little bit less and be a little bit more with my family, spend more time in the studio because I had to make one record a week, so I had to have yeah. my studio time. So in the end, it all worked out. And one and a half year later, boom, Corona hits. And yeah. and and everything like everything stopped. But but we have been building the label for one and a half year, you know, yeah. for two years. So we were kind of safe, you know, and and so everything worked out for us uh, perfectly. You're in, you were or you are in a position where you have the platform, you have the audience to be able to start a label and already draw a lot of attention to yourself and to the artists who you sign. What do you think about up and coming producers and artists who want to start? their own label in order to be able to self-release versus going and sending demos to bigger labels for credentials and you know to have more leverage overall i think you should do both because especially when you're a new growing artist uh, you will never get the kind of reach a, 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 a bigger label will get you know you're, you're never if, if you can do a, a release on musical freedom or, or whatever you know how, how much reach those, those labels have you know and if you yeah if you think like, yeah independent i'm gonna keep uh, uh the 100 percent of of uh, of the sales well yeah if the sales is uh, is 100 versus 10 million you know <laughs> like uh, it's it's uh, it's still still not that much so i think you should always try especially when you're building to see okay what kind of music do i make uh, what label could it fit and try to get it on that label so you can build your audience but if nobody uh, wants to sign it you can still self-release i like that you said do both because i think it's good to rotate and also not to necessarily put yourself in a corner because i hear a lot of artists that are like i will like maybe they have one bad experience with a label or they heard about someone yeah. that didn't i will never release on a label yeah. but then you also have the people who uh don't release because of the fact that let's say they sign a track with a label, but then they keep sending the new ones to the labels and the labels are rejecting, so they just don't release anything and their monthly listeners start collapsing. Yeah. So I think that rotation is smart. Yeah, and you know, but with this, be very smart with your contracts because you know, if, if you sign to a label and you know how it works, they put three options in and right. you know, and they put, put a release block in. So you need to get rid of all those things to, to keep the freedom to self-release release if you want to self-release. Now it's time for our out of the box segment where we're gonna ask Moti a completely random question. So Moti, what are your thoughts on pineapple on pizza? Uh, I don't really care. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 you know, I, I ate it sometimes. And, and I don't think it's, it's disgusting, yeah. but, I'd, but I prefer- He's crying. But 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 I prefer a, a proper Italian pizza, you know. So, oh, so so okay. if, if if I order something, wow. if, it's safe. yeah, it's safe. <laughs> no no. But if 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 I order something, I I would always order like uh, something with uh, pepperoni or something. Oh. That, that's best. What would you say is the number one thing that labels are looking for from artists? To be honest. Um, it depends on the label, but I would say major labels are looking for TikTok hype. <laughs> you know, if if 
if you have have something that goes viral on 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 TikTok or or on on Instagram Reels or whatever, that's what labels are looking for. For 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 me, what I'm looking for with my labels, they were cool. Is I'm looking for uh, uh, artists who can um, um, can deliver. So um, I send a lot of one-offs. But but when someone sends me a track, I think ah, this is a good track, and then release it, and then a, a, a few weeks after, I get a track, another good one, another good one, another good one. Mm. That's something that, that they stand uh, out. Yeah, yeah, exactly, because it's just you know just steady quality. Yeah. And these days, to build a profile, to build an artist profile, you need to be consistent, right? Because uh, especially on streaming, uh, you know, your monthly listens go up and down, up and down, up and down. But if you can keep it at a certain level then your your followers will yeah. grow and if you want uh, the al- algorithm to work for you right you have to have followers so but your followers are people who actually get a notification when you release something uh, um, uh, uh, when you release a new track it's in the release radar right and Spotify the, followers. yeah and the more followers you have uh, the, the higher your numbers will be. And it's so funny how cons- how accurate that is for trying to grow on Instagram or TikTok as well, that you need that consistency. Yeah. And you, because you, a lot of people are just, you know, do a one-off post that does yeah. well, or they have a post that does really well, but it doesn't actually really go with their brand. It's something random. So then people go to their profile and they're like, well, this isn't what I was looking for. Yeah. And it's so interesting how that is very similar with, uh, with yeah, Link. Well, Spotify is kind of... Uh, it's, it's social media. It's social platform. media, yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think also on the note of having to be consistent, there's so much pressure to be consistent and right. put out so much more music. And last night, what I realized Every song is a remix of like a 90s vocal now because, and I thought to myself, why is this happening? Okay, so the vocals are already hooky and catchy, yeah. but it's easy, right? It's easy to take that a cappella, put it into a record, do your amazing production around it, rather than working on, an, on a track with a vocalist and creating something original, which can take so much longer. And that's where that whole sort of uh, consistency, sorry, quantity over quality. How do, how do you feel like about that as someone who runs a label having to clear vocals like that? Or, or do you? Uh, I do a lot of uh, covers as well, but I think the main reason why people use cover vocals is um, because it's just very hard to find good top lines or write them yourself. You know, if, right. if you're a good producer, it doesn't mean you can write songs. It's already difficult to get into the studio with the with the with the good writers. You know, it's just as difficult difficult yeah. to get the studio with good writers as to to uh, to get David Guetta in your studio. You know, yeah. because yeah. you're you're working with you want to work with the top writers. Yeah, yeah. Th- they work with the Guettas and everyone. So it's very difficult to get very very talented writers in the studio. Um, and doing it yourself, yeah. Well, maybe you have to tell them, but you don't know. You have to, you know, you have to make yeah. the hours and and build build your 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 strength. But and all the top lines that are out there that get sent around, if it's if it's a hit, Geta or or Tiesto or okay. somebody already pulled it. You know, it's like ah, that was for me. You know, so so yeah. it's very difficult to get good top lines. And with with cover folks, those are hits from the past. You know, and you can clear it and and hop bum, you have a good top line. You can release a song. So that makes it a lot more easy to get a good vocal on your track because th- there are so many hits out there. Yeah, you can just uh, cover. Yeah, what but, happens when all the samples have been sampled? They uh, sample them again. Sample them again. <laughs> yeah. L- look at the. Uh, yeah, I mean, get it, it, it blue. Dead yeah. blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For, for the how many time, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, it, but it's cool because in, <laughs> you know, the last few years, the new trend is that they rewrite uh, 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 covers. Yeah. And that's cool, you know, because at first it was just, you know, you, you take a vocal and bam, you, you put a new beat on it. And now, um, you know, they, they keep the chorus or they keep a part of the chorus. They write a whole new verse, you know? So it's, there's yeah. a more creative process involved. Yeah. And that's, that's nice. We also want to give a special shout out to Boombox, boombox boombox.io, for making this collaboration between me and Fabio, aka Noise London, possible. And to bring you the best advice from industry pros like Moti and marketing and business and to make better music. So Moti, when it comes to your own tracks, what do you think it was, especially in the beginning, that made so many of those record labels interested? Because you kind of, you had some, you had many big hits. Like what was the thing that first got their attention? Um... 
I think I was very good at uh, finding what was a popular sound and, and giving my own twist to it. Right. So and and that worked out for me really well, you know. So because you know the dub said tsunami and I made this is dirty, you know, and you know so try to make a drop that that feels kind of similar and yeah. send it to dubs like hey guys let's make a collab and they're like yeah, yeah man oh this sounds like us okay, okay perfect <laughs> you know? and that that's basically how how it works a little bit and you know with, with virus I was inspired by Mammoth was a very big hit yeah. back then and and you know I was inspired by the by the lead synth with the glide on lead synth yeah. so so. So I, I so I made a drop of virus based on on, on the, I want to make a lead synth like that you know so so I was always always very on to what was happening at the moment and try to you know you're you're not copying you get inspired by it and right. but but you give it your own twist yeah because we talk yeah. all about collaboration all the time that's yeah. like our main topic on this podcast yeah. and I love how you're saying that if you want someone who especially who has a specific sound to be interested in collaborating with you that if you make something that sounds like them but has a twist that isn't you know it's not identical to them but it's yeah. them with a twist that they're going to be more interested in it, obviously yeah yeah for sure for sure because because uh, uh, well n now it's it's a bit different because um because of streaming you know back then everyone's just making club bangers that, that was mm -hmm. what everyone was doing and now uh, also the bigger artists if you want to get a collab with a bigger artist um they are also considering more poppy tracks or whatever because right. they're like, oh yeah that's good for the streaming right. but if if you want to go for club records yeah for sure listen to what they play and and most of the guys they stick to one sound so you can you know just try, yeah, well try, if you want to you want to have a get out collab which is very difficult but let's say you want to have a more than collab maybe a little bit uh, easier yeah. to get um yeah you should make f uh, future rave you know right. so and and so everyone has his own style and yeah try to yeah, uh, get uh, inspired by it and give it your own twist, yeah. How often are A&Rs looking for something similar versus something completely different? Mm. Because they, at some point, you know, I imagine as an A&R, you want to be the person who discovered the new future rave or whatever it is, yeah. right? But also then you, you take a bit of a risk there where you're trying to put something new in front of an audience and you're not quite sure whether it's going to to glue with them for, for, for me it's uh, i don't care i just release what, what i like right. and uh, you know we, we, we've had uh, uh, artists on our label who have, who have uh, uh, a lot of uh, instagram following or, or monthly listeners and we have artists on the label who don't who don't even have a profile on spotify yet you know <laughs> so 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 for me it's just like if i like a track i like a track and i release it and i don't think there's any risks at at a track yeah the, the, well the only thing that 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 is risky is that you can disappoint the guy who's releasing on the label you know because right. because now with streaming it's it's like what i said as a label i can't uh guarantee that spotify will see the track and you know and put you in curated list i just can't guarantee that because it's not based on labels it's based on artist profiles so if you don't have a big profile uh, which we had a few times like it, it was a very good track uh, with, with a good artist and then they're disappointed like yeah it's only doing this much streams like yeah sorry i yeah. can you know i i can try to p push it a little bit here and there you know but but not with spotify itself then you know i can ask uh, so some other friends of mine who have who have own playlists from oh can you maybe add this to your playlist right. you know th that's what i can do but that's all we can do and that's where that consistency comes back and building your artist profile you can't depend yeah. on the label for everything yeah. and also there's other strategies like again collaboration with other people that have yeah. an artist profile it's and good. then working on your virality as well right yeah. like you said like at the end of the day we have the best marketing tool in the yeah. world here and it's yeah, free and yeah. we use it every day yeah, that's true. That's true. so uh you know trying to use the labels resources for marketing which has more credentials is a little cooler has, yeah. has more grassroots and then trying to find ways to push it yourself yeah for sure for sure remember the question of the day to comment down below your answer to is what is your dream record label and why and also what guests would you like us to have on and what topics would you like us to cover and you can find moti on all socials at moti official and you can find myself on noise london and lucas on music by lucas all the links are in the description below yeah and remember to subscribe and we will see you for the next podcast bye that was spontaneous. Yeah. <laughs> Moti, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>